Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem isomorphic strings. We are given two strings and we want to determine if they are isomorphic, but what are isomorphic strings? Well, the simple definition is they are isomorphic if all the characters of one string can be replaced to get the other string. So replaced, so basically that means that S and T, both of the strings have to be the exact same size. And luckily that's not something we have to worry about. Basically in this problem, all inputs are going to be the same size anyway. So that's one, but it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And they explain that in the next paragraph. So let's just take a look at the first example. We're given two strings, egg and add. And when they say replace all characters of one string to get the other string, they mean that all occurrences of a certain character must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of the characters. What that really means is that all E's, for example, an egg, we have an E, all E's have to be replaced with another character. In this case, it's kind of obvious. We'd want to replace the E with an A character so that we can convert this word into this word. And the next character, G, in this case, obviously has to be replaced with a D if we want to get the other word. But the thing is, if we say that, okay, Gs are going to be replaced with D characters, we're basically creating a mapping saying that Gs are going to be replaced with D, so we have to continue that. So basically, the next G character is already decided. We have to convert it into a D, but that's okay in this case, because if we do that, we do end up getting this this word. Basically what we're saying is that any character from S can only map to a single character. We can't say that G maps to two different characters like D and maybe E as well or something. And that becomes really clear when we actually look at the second example, which is this. So let's just go character by character. Okay, F in the first string, but we have a B in the second string. So what that means is that probably we want F to map to a B, right? We have to do that. We have to map F to a B if we want even a chance to be able to convert this into this string. Uh, but let's look at the next character, O. Okay, so O needs to be mapped to A in the second string. So we're gonna say O maps to A. That works so far, right? We can convert the first two characters of this into the first two characters of this. But the problem comes when we look at the third character. We have an O, right? So we want to map this O to an R if we want to finish the string. But we already decided that O's are going to be mapped to A's. We can't just change that. And we definitely can't map it to two different characters like R and A. So basically, when, once we've gotten to this point, we realize it's impossible for us to map this into this. These are not isomorphic strings, so we have to return false in this case. But there's one last little trick kind of thing that I want to show you, uh, because I think this is probably what a lot of people get tripped up on. For this to be isomorphic with this, we also have to say that this is isomorphic with this, right? So well, we're just going to kind of swap the positions of these, put bar here and put foo here, and now try to check if they're isomorphic, okay? B maps to F, so good so far. B is going to map to F. A is going to map to O. That's good so far, right? We can have A map to O. Now we have R map to O as well. Now, this doesn't look like a problem at first, right? Because A is mapping to O, but we're not having A map to two different characters. We're having R now map to O. But we have two characters Two different characters, A and R, both mapping to the same character. We can't have that either, and they mentioned that right here. No two characters may map to the same character. So this is, I think, what people might get tripped up on in this problem. And basically, it means that when we are going through the strings and creating that mapping, that we are going to have to have the mapping go both ways, right? We're going to have to say, okay, B maps to F, and also F maps to B. Now for the actual algorithm on how we can efficiently solve this problem. And it's not too different from what you might think. If you were doing this manually and you had a really long string, you would probably want to write out the mappings, right? You would say, okay, B and F. So we're going to write out the mapping. B maps to F, right? You'd probably do, use like a piece of paper or something, right? And we're in this case actually going to have two mappings, right? Making sure that we map one to the other and the other to uh, the other one, right? So, so I'm gonna say here F maps to B as well. 
And it'll make more sense as we finish this example. So next we'll say A maps to O. So here we're gonna say A maps to O. And over here we're gonna say that O maps to A. So, so far so good, right? But now we get to the third character, R maps to O. So over here, that's perfectly fine. R maps to O. But when we do it up here, we see that O maps to R, but O was already mapping to a different character up here, right? O maps to two different characters. So that's how we know that this is not isomorphic and then we can return false. So I hope this idea of, you know, using a piece of paper or something to map from one string to the other and uh, vice versa makes sense. Be, and then think about it. What kind of data structure would we want to use to do these mappings? Well, the easiest way and the most efficient way is to use a hash map because we know that inserting and basically reading and writing to a hash map is always constant time, big O of one. So that will be the most efficient solution for this problem because with a hash map, the overall time complexity is just gonna be iterating through both strings. And we know that both strings are gonna be the same size. So let's just say the size of the string is N. Technically it would be two times N because we have two strings, but you know th this reduces down to big O of N anyway. And the overall memory complexity is also gonna be big O of N because clearly we are gonna be using some hash maps to kind of store these mappings. So with that being said, we can actually jump into the code now. Okay, so now let's do my favorite part, running out the code. Remember, we're gonna have two data structures. I'm gonna call it map ST and map TS, basically indicating that in one of the maps, we're gonna be mapping the characters from S to T. And in the other string, we're gonna be mapping the characters from T to S. And they're both gonna be hash maps. This is how you can do hash maps in Python. And then we just wanna iterate through the strings. We know they're the same size, so we can use an index for both of them, our pointer i. We're just gonna iterate through the entire length of one of the strings. And we're gonna get the character uh, at index i from both of the strings. So let's just call them character one and character two. So character one is gonna be from string s. Character two is gonna be from string t. Before we actually do the insertions, like this is clearly what we want to do, right? From S to T, we want to map character one to character two. And in the other map, map TS, we want to map the character two to character one. But before we even do this, we want to detect if this character already has a different mapping. If it has a different mapping than this, then we have to return false and that will stop our algorithm. But if that's not the case, then we will continue and do this insertion and then continue to the next iteration of the loop. So how can we detect if it already has another mapping? Well, first in Python, at least, we don't want to get a key error. So first we're going to check if C1 is in map ST. And if it is, and basically is map st the mapping of that character one is it different than c2 what we're about to insert right because this c1 to c2 is a is what we're about to insert but if it has a different mapping already that's when we know we can return false but we're not done just yet we have an or condition because we know that we have two hash maps. And if the opposite is true, basically if this mapping also, if there's a different mapping than this one, then we also return false. So we're basically gonna copy this exact same thing with the other hash map. So if C2 is a key in the map TS, the other map, and if map TS um, with C2 is not equal to C1, uh, then we know it has a it has a different mapping already. And again, we will return false if either of these is true. But if neither of them is true, then we can do the insertion, continue to the next iteration of the loop and keep doing that until we exit the loop. And if we do exit the loop, then we know that definitely they are isomorphic and we can return true. And if you wanna save one line of code, which really isn't important, but I like to, we can, instead of you know using an index i, we can get rid of this and iterate through c1 and c2 because we know these strings are the exact same length. In Python, you can iterate through two strings simultaneously like this, zipping them. And you know, just do that if you uh, you know feel like saving one line of code, but it's not important. Let's run this to make sure that it works though, which actually is important. 
And on the left, you can see that yes, it does work and it is pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.